Hi, I'm Nick Bonner. Uh, this is Mark Bridge, my good friend. Uh, we're here at ArborFest Expo, and this is the TreeStuff.com micro rigging lab. So what we've created here is a hands-on experience that anyone that attends can come to. They can use all of the tools and the timber that we've provided and build their own rigging scenario and then execute that rigging scenario in multiple fashions, right? So the Mark way versus the Nick way and try it multiple times. Uh, can't say enough about Mark. Mark is a, a global authority on these types of things. Co-inventor of the tree motion, Pinto pulley, hitch climber pulley, hitch climber eccentric, the new tree motion. I, I could keep going. Um, That's the enough, Afia, thank you, Nick. All that stuff uh, are all brainchilds of Mark and the tree motion team. Um, without much ado, let's dive right in. Walk us through what you want to show us here today, Mark. Thank you, Nick. Well, it's obviously something that we discussed before, wasn't it? Um, the situation we had here is we've got a big we're working this, it's a big spready tree, it's a red oak or something like that, just something with a broad canopy and we've got a building underneath it and this orange limb is what we're going to remove next, isn't it Nick? Yes sir, this is the trouble limb. This is the trouble limb, so I'm feeling a bit nervous about this, um, this is me, so I'm kind of here, I'm trying to work out how to get rid of this limb without clipping the building. So what I'm thinking, Nick, is we've got our rigging system in here. Yep, got top our block of the tree, up very yep. traditional setup. Climb high, put the block in. So what we thought about was to do it in two ways. Um, I think we do a sort of conventional way first. Sure, more traditional. The, the way, you know, I might have done it, we might have done I might have done it, you know, 15 years ago or something like that. The way I might do it if I had to myself. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is I'm just going to try and fit, because you can't see this from the camera, obviously, but the line of the building, the corner of the building, is kind of here, just on the inside of the limb. So I reckon if we face this out, out and down, we can actually swing it clear of the building. And if you just let it run, Nick, we can drop it round into the landing zone is over sure. here. And, you know, that probably works 99 out of 100 times, 90 out of 100 times, no problems. Yep. So I say let's go for it. Yeah, well... One thing here, it's a really long limb, it's heavy wood, yeah. so I'm a little bit concerned that if I tie it here, there's not the hinge, Your hinge might break. isn't going to hold long enough to swing it around far enough. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach it a bit further out. Okay. So if you keep that a little bit tight on the, on the lowering bollard, sure. that'll actually support the hinge and bring it around a bit further. You okay with yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. I can certainly put some pressure on there. Okay, just take out the stopper knot. So. I'll half hitch that and then just timber hitch it back here. That's how you know he's European. You he's don't timber throwing, hitch. Throw in the timber hitch. Get that nice and tight. All right, and then I'll yard up on it on our porter app, get it under a little tension. We saw it go up there a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take a wrap and I'll, uh, I'll stand back. So. What you'll notice you. is I've decided to bring my climbing line and myself down this side. I don't want myself in the front because that's where it's going to be swinging. Also, the rigging lines are going to be coming around the front as Nick lets the piece run, as sure. you let it run. That's obviously not the place to be. So I've decided to go around the back of the tree or around the back side of the limb to be well clear of where this piece is moving to. And I think that, you know, what you're going to show here, I think some people can probably see coming, but I think your positioning is a very common position that would be taken. So let's go ahead and let's see what happens. So I'm just going to face this cut. Make sure to leave a really thin hinge because we can manipulate it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll put in the, I've got in the face, Nick. Are you okay? Yeah, it's facing downwards and a little diagonally. I bent a trim saw bar doing this in real life once. No okay. joke. Okay, I'm going through the back. Stand clear. Yep. Let's do the trick. I'm going to have to help this on its way a bit, aren't I? So that's going to do something like that. Which, of course, is not great because what we were hoping for was that that would snap earlier. But with, real with a weight, heavy limb... It would. it would go this way and then snap and... And it's coming, and I'm right immediately in the danger zone. 
because of the way the pivot point is here, this is where the limb is pivoting. So this is a really high risk. In fact, that I will get, and I have no space to swing back into. Right. So I'm right in the danger zone there. This is a super hazardous situation. Yeah, I think a lot of people will even try to balance a limb sometimes in that single fashion. Um, and I, I actually had something really similar in another instance happen to me where I had a limb spring back like that and, mm -hmm. and almost kill me. Um, so yeah, I definitely noticed that. So these pin type scenarios are a realistic scenario if you um, consider the pivot point. And I think a classic thing on here would be, I'm feeling a bit nervous about this, so I'm actually going to use the, leave the hinge wide on the top and narrow on the bottom, try and influence the swing on the, um, of the limb by the hinge, amount of hinge wood that I leave, and it's just not going to happen, okay? Um, my theory is that, or my feet, my, the way I view rigging is that either you get your piece hung correctly, um, and then a correct cut will assist it, but if it's not hung correctly, you can do whatever cut you want. It's 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 going to go it's going to go wrong. So we're going to try and do the same. Or we're going to repeat the same thing. Or cut the same limb. But cut a the same way. limb. Thank you, Nick. Feeling mildly jet lagged and silly here. So we're just going to spin around the. Yep, it's got a swivel so. on it. So there's a couple of things I'd like to think about here. That scenario before, that limb coming round, um, is whilst the rigging point is overhead, we're not snatching into the above, the, the, the mass is not above the pulley is what I'm trying to say. Um, it remains a dynamic rigging scenario in the sense that there's um, the orientation of the load is changing, it's dropping, it's shock loading, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. What I'd like to try and do now is um, I would try and mitigate those things by placing a block um, above the, the problem limb. So I've got it hung up here with a ultra sling. Ultra sling. Go ahead and talk about it. Nick. I love ultra slings. I think they're really cool. You see here, um, this has pockets on it. So when you go to put that block in, you don't have to tie a knot or anything. You just simply choke the block through that nearest pocket. I think these are really cool. Uh, big thanks to Nick Araya out of California. He hand spliced all these miniature slings for us from the Porter Wrap anchors uh, all the way up to these. Now, there's a number of th there's a number of things I'll be considering as I'm setting up this pick. Um, one of the things I'm trying to define is where the center of gravity of this problem limb is. Okay, so I'm kind of thinking there's a lot of heavy wood out the back and there's thin limbs and frith out the front. So I'm kind of thinking, yes, it may be here, but as you know, it's a, it's a rhetorical question. Um, this, this is heavy, foliage is really heavy. Um, the water ten, will be this end of the limb, so often lip, limbs are gonna tip. Even so though the bigger wood is Even though the thicker wood, it really doesn't matter. It has to be very, very uh, you know, heavy wood for that to make a difference. So my rule of thumb, tends to be, you know, I tend to go for sort of two thirds, one third. So it's fairly far forward. Um, that tends to be what I operate with. Yeah, I still think this is a little bit far forward. I want to come a little bit back a little bit with this. The other thing we're doing is if you consider vector four, the, the forces acting on this limb, okay? We actually have one force acting downwards and one force acting outwards. And the resultant vector will halve, the, because it's a pulley here, will halve these two, uh, will halve these, um, this angle. So the resultant vector is more or less here. So Which it's actually- Really noticeable. I mean, even a small amount of force here, and you can see us tipping this down yep. with just my finger. But I mean, I can pull pretty hard and you still see the limb dropping a little, but I mean, that force, if I put that much into here, I can, you know, break this screw out. And Whereas it, it, the way really evident. this force is acting is it's actually pushing this in. Now, as you all know, with the matchstick, you know, bending the matchstick will snap it. Trying to push the matchstick together is really hard. Right. The, think big matchsticks, and this is what's happening. Now, as we were talking about before, Nick, these are models, so I think they're oversimplifying. 
um, it's too easy to, it's to oversimplify to say, place the block further and further forwards and you'll get a good compression on here. Because there's no tapering of the wood. Yeah, and what's going to happen is as that limb gets thin, thinner and longer, it's actually going to start introducing a sort of, you know, um, a wave type motion into that limb, which is problematic as well. You're also starting to bend this anchor point, so there's many forces you're looking sure. at. I still think this is interesting. So, the way I'd go about this is I'd ask Nick to, to put a bit of tension on the line, and I, t I tend to work from the front backwards. So I'll place the front um, leg of my balancer first, and in fact what I'm going to do here, and I leave it pretty open. I want to have a bit of space so that we can maybe winch up a bit, so I'm going to come down a little bit. Um, in this instance, I'm just going to girth hitch it and get a couple of half hitches over the top. Then once I've done that is, so this leg of the, 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 the Y part, as it were, I might have that down a little bit lower. I'm actually going to use to, um, to adjust to get this um, point You're right. deflecting this. To deflect it. Well, basically, I'm trying to get these points over the center of gravity. And the final one is pull is going to be this. So this one, I'm adjusting this angle here. Again, I'm going with a clove there. You interrupt me, Nick, if this isn't making sense. No, I love it. I hate the clove hitch well, as a rigging knot because you do, it's a, you know, it rolls. the ground guys struggle. Um, the rolling I don't really think is an issue because you can just tie it off with a I, do, I like it because you can actually adjust the length of it. You yeah. know, you just roll it through the clove. And then as I move back, the final um, leg is actually pulling this backwards to bring it all into line nicely. This is really cool. Um, that's actually a bit short. I, I'm a big tree nerd and like, I love the idea that we're able to replicate the same problem or the same scenario twice in a row and show the effect um, of how it works and the impact of our, our rigging choices. Yeah, that back leg, back leg is a bit short. This is literally what I'd have in my rigging kit. Is if we go out on a job like this, I'll have 12 millimeter serious rigging line, double braid rigging line, um, just lengths of it that I just tie. Blake hitches on the front, I was going to ask, whatever I wanted to explain that. These are Blake's hitches, um, which is really neat. You don't need a spliced eye to do that, yeah. right? A lot of spider legs, we sell spider legs with spliced eyes. Um, and you can just simply do it with any old piece of rope and a Blake's hitch. There's no, there's no argument against doing using spliced eyes and then using prussics. I just like the flexibility that the Blake gives me because I can put a wrap on, take a wrap off. It's just, to me, it's a no-brainer. So am I locking the porter wrap off on well, this? Or I think, are you going to ask I me to I think what I'd run? like you to do, Nick, is because of where the anchor point is, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step cut it. Okay. okay? Um, then I'm going to move away. Yep. And then I'm going to ask you just to drop it a bit, or to, you may have to just jiggle it a bit. Okay. What's going to happen is it's going to swing a little bit this way. We let it stabilize, and then we just, and I can actually just help handle it down past the building. Great. Okay, so is that locked off? It is locked off for now, but I'm going to go ahead and unlock it and just make sure that I have good control on it. I've got a fair amount of wraps, so I probably can't let it run. Okay, I'm just going to put a step cut in here. If we were using a GRCS, actually what I'd do on this is on the on the on the fast on the on the on the on the lower um, ratio i'll just ask nick, nick to take this up just so that it's 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 as, t as tight as yep. but not go into the into the other into the slope so just so that everyone that's with us what is a step cut step cut is just a bypass cut so, so you're basically have two cuts that pass each other yeah one passes the other i'm going to leave it quite wide in the middle uh, it's just going to hold it there. Give me a moment to get away, and then we can then we can drop Great. it. And the reason I'm not using a, a a face cut there, I'm not putting a notch in, is I don't want to lower it. I don't want this to change orientation. I want to hold it exactly in this orientation, um, ideally. I don't want it to tip or do anything because I don't want any shock loadering it and sure. anything. So that's an important designation. Our goal is to have it come off at this kind of 40 degree angle, not to lay flat. No. So I think as, as somebody who's tried to do balancing myself, I think that's a mistake that I've made is that I'm always trying in my mind to get the limb to come off and, and lay flat. But in reality, what I want is 
for the limb to come off and stay in its exact position. Okay, I think that's really interesting. Okay, Nick, I'm going to do the top cut now. All right, let's see it. And I'm going to go on the inside here just so that... I'm going to cut into Groot here. Okay, so I just pass the original cut. So, you know, Groot can climb away and he gets himself out, out of the way back here. Okay, Nick, just give that a jiggle for me. So what I'm expecting it to do is just to do that, okay? So Nick can just drop it a bit. It actually sits on the top leg. I feel like I can take 50% credit for what just happened. I can come down, give it a kick, and then we can maneuver it around the building. That's pretty impressive. Mark, it really did hold the same position. Yeah. Well, we can bring it up again. And you can see, literally, you know, that's doing yeah, minimal. So this is a super safe option for the climber. It's safe for your anchor points because it's not shock loading anything. This is the one rigging scenario that I'd consider using carabiners in. Uh, steel carabiners, steel connectors, if you choose to use slings here with connectors, because you can ensure that they're positively orientated, sure. you know how they're being loaded. And I just like it because it's quiet and controlled. And the other thing I really like about balancing limbs is it gives you an immediate feedback. It's right or it's wrong. It's held in position or it tips. There's not many things in life where you have that immediate feedback. Yeah, very so, cool. Yeah. Mark? Thank you so much. Hey, thank you for having me. Rim balancing with Mark Bridge at the treestuff.com DIY micro rigging lab. We're gonna have this exhibit on the road with us at all of our major events this year. If you don't make it to Arbor Fest Expo here in uh, Asheville, North Carolina over the next couple days, come see us at TCIA, we'll have this. If you're around Asheville, North Carolina, come on down. We're selling tickets at the door. We have a big party, foot locking, techno music, all sorts of cool stuff going on. There are free beer. Uh, the whole nine yards. So uh, we really look forward to seeing you guys and girls. And uh, if not, uh, look forward to more of these rigging demonstrations uh, with other big names like Mark uh, in the next couple of days. Thank you so much.